Welcome back to Statistics on Catalyst University. My name is Kevin Tokoff, and in this video I will show you how to conduct an independent t-test in Excel. Two things, again, um, I use the Mac version of this, so Windows will differ very slightly, but it's ultimately the same. And B, if you have not downloaded the data analysis tool pack, either do that or go watch the video where I show you how to do that because you won't be able to go further unless you've downloaded that tool pack. In any case, to conduct the test, what I'm going to do is go to data. Once I'm in data, I'm going to go over here, usually on the right side somewhere, it'll say data analysis. I'll click this. It gives me a bunch of data analysis statistical tools. Towards the very bottom, there's two, one, two tests right here. One of them says t-test, two sample assuming equal variances and a t-test, two sample assuming unequal variances. These two right here are both your independent t-tests. Now, which one to use depends on your data. And to actually determine which one of these it is, you actually have to do what's called an f-test, which I show in a different video. I'll put the link to it in the description as well. I'm just going to show you, I'll actually show you both of these, and it's pretty much the same either way. All right, so variable one range. What I'm going to do is delete all this stuff. And what I'm going to do is, this is my first variable. Let's just use that as group A. I'm going to start with 13 and drag all the way down to the bottom one. Okay, so you can see it's cell B4 to B13, B4 to B13. Then go to the next one. Let me delete all this. This is going to be my group B. I'm going to highlight 5 all the way down to 10. Um, this hypothesized mean difference, if you don't put anything in there, it will assume zero. But generally speaking, this is basically what your null hypothesis is. Recall that your null hypothesis basically says that there's no difference between the two groups. And so if there's no difference, that means your difference is zero. So normally, it's pretty safe to assume this number you can input a zero in there. Here's my confidence level. My alpha value is 0.05, which means that I'm operating at a 95% confidence level. Um, that's safe to assume right now, but if you want to change the confidence level or your alpha value, you just input the number here. Your output range, this tells you where your data is actually going to, your data output will appear. I'm going to say, let's just have it appear right there. And then I'm going to hit OK. And it spits out all this stuff. Again, let me go over some of the important aspects here. Um, the mean is obviously important here when you report data. You do have the variance, not the standard deviation, although recall that you can actually calculate the standard deviation from the variance. You just take the square root of each of these numbers because we would usually report data as the mean plus or minus the standard deviation. Now recall that the two-tailed p-value is a more conservative p-value. And so no one's ever going to say you can never use the two-tailed. In fact, when in doubt, you should always use the two-tailed. The one-tailed is only used in certain circumstances, i.e. when one group you know for fact, with absolute certainty for the most part, that, it's, that you know it's going to be higher or lower than the other group. Okay, so for example, if I knew that A, whatever that was measuring, if I knew that according to data, A was supposed to be higher than B, then I would probably be more justified using the one tail. Okay, but usually people will just use the two tail. Okay, so that was the t-test assuming equal variances. What I'm actually going to do now is do the same thing but assume unequal variances. So let's calculate that and it's pretty much the same thing. Once I'm in data, I click on data analysis. It's this t-test, the second one, unequal variances. And I'm pretty much going to do the same thing. Even though it's already set up here, I'm going to go ahead and delete it just so I can show you again. Variable one range, scroll from 13 to 15. Let's get rid of this. Variable two range, this five down to this 10. I'm going to say hypothesized means difference of zero because my null Hypothesis states that there's no difference between groups generally, and no difference between these two groups means the difference is zero. I'm going to keep a 95% confidence level, ergo the 0.05 alpha value. Right, let's select the output where I want the data to appear. Let's put it right here, and then I'm going to hit OK. And here's my t-test assuming unequal variances. Again, some of the important data points might be the mean and the variance. 
Um, from the variance, again, I can calculate the standard deviations by taking the square roots of each of these variances. And again, we also have, and I'm actually going to make this a little wider so you can see what it is, the one-tailed p-value and then also the two-tailed p-value. Some people, whenever they report data in some kind of article or paper, they would also report this t-statistic. Um, but you absolutely are going to have to report the p-value, whichever one you choose, for your given situation and the confidence level. Okay, So this is how you calculate and, and do the data analysis for independent t-tests. Now, I will say this. Choosing between the equal variances and unequal variances relies on another test referred to as an F-test. It's, again, just fairly easy to do. I'll show you that in the next video. And then after that, we will do paired or dependent t-tests. Thank you for watching this video. Make sure to like and subscribe to the channel.